The future of design goes far beyond the mobile and desktop interface. Here's what Mark Zuckerberg has to say about it. What would be the ultimate expression of basically people using technology to feel present with each other? And it's not phones. It's not right. computers. Like, how do you get this, this sensation of actually being present like you're right there with another person? That's, to me, what virtual and eventually augmented reality are all about. Now, Apple also launched a bunch of new hardware and software, including the Apple Watch Ultra, CarPlay, that comes with a much more immersive and dynamic experience, all within our fingertips. And there's also an AR VR headset, which they haven't released a date just yet. Yeah, so look, Apple's been working on an augmented or virtual reality headset for a number of years. Now, Meta is also investing billions every quarter into hardware and the metaverse. Incredibly inspiring view of whatever you find most beautiful. Hey, are you coming? Yeah, just gotta find something to wear. They even opened up their first physical store in California. Now, Google is also experimenting with AR and VR in all sorts of capacity. It's facts. The future of design is going to be beyond the mobile and desktop interface. Now, over the last four years, we also see wearables, more specifically smartwatches, growing significantly in market share. According to Statista, the units of smartwatches increased nearly 100% from 2018 to 2022. So what am I trying to get at? Now, designing and building experiences for new technologies that redefine the status quo comes with a cost. It's risky, it's expensive, and there's a high chance of failure. Now, we saw this happen with Google Glasses. Google Glasses was seen as the moonshot technology for the company at the time, as they were trying to introduce an entirely new form of medium to engage with. Here are the basics of how to use glass. This is your timeline. It's a row of cards. Things to the left are happening now or coming up, like the weather. But it failed. People were simply not ready to wear cameras on their faces all day. The utility was just not there yet. The timing was wrong. Now, according to Startup Talkie, this failure costed Google $895 million. Now, that's obviously chump change for the big boys, but it's still something that could have been managed a little bit better. And there's something we can learn from this failure as well especially if our clients or the businesses we work for don't have such extensive funds like Google. As companies start to take on bigger risks, maybe even the one that you are currently working at, it doesn't make sense to make the same mistakes. So today we are blessed to have such great tools and apps that help us streamline the product development cycle. Instead of having to build an entire product from scratch, we can use tools like Protopy to prototype high fidelity products. Now, I'm not here to say that every designer needs to learn how to build high fidelity prototypes, but the industry is changing and to stay relevant, this is just one of the ways to stay in demand. Now, this is one of my favorite examples of how you can use high fidelity prototyping to really test how a product might look and feel before investing millions into developing it. Now, I'm gonna pronounce this wrong, but Kay van den Aker is a designer and technologist from the Netherlands. He also has a stunning portfolio where he has a half-tone model of himself that follows your cursor around. Now, in 2022, he set to solve the problem of modern music listening experiences often lack suspense. He mentions any song in the world is just one click away. No sonic feedback, no haptic feedback, and flat visual feedback. His solution? Our approach is a device which puts emphasis on the albums, their artworks and information. In contrast to music streaming apps, Tiles provokes a careful selection of music and elegant interactions to enjoy your favorite tunes. So here's how it works, and in quotes, by mechanically moving the top down, music moves from the collection into the player and presents the user with album info and playback controls. Now, without having to spend millions, Kay was able to mock up a prototype with Protopie, that's also the sponsor to this video, and was able to combine it with a physical frame to explore how the interactions would feel. The evolution was quite radical. Here's the final prototype.
As you can see, there is no way you can prototype this in a software like Figma. And it's a ridiculous idea to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions on an idea that hasn't proven to be a viable product. So where do we think the state of product design will be in five and maybe 10 years time? Well, let's bring in Fredo, growth lead at Protopi into this conversation. Um, so we launched Protopi publicly in early 2017 as a high fidelity prototyping tool for uh, mostly mobile products. Uh, however, in the last few years, Protopi really turned into a fully fledged high fidelity prototyping tool that covers the entire um, spectrum of digital products. So mobile, web, desktop, IoT, automotive, and, and everything in between. Um, around 2013, um, Google highlighted mobile first. Um, however, there was no good prototyping tool for designers back then. So Protopi started as a 20% side project for Tony, um, who is the uh, co-founder and CEO of Protopi while he was working at Google um, as an interaction designer. Yeah, renowned companies like Google, Microsoft, BMW, GoPro, um, Snap, and, and Spotify, they've all been using uh, Protopi for high fidelity prototypes. Uh, to give you a few examples, the Maps team at Google has been using Protopi for prototypes that they actually use for usability testing in the field. Designers at Spotify um, use Protopi for their core experience as well as search personalization. And companies like BMW have been prototyping the driver's experience of the future using multiple displays, hardware, and even voice interactions. Uh, where do we see Protopi in the next five to 10 years? I would say Protopi would be the interaction design tool for all digital products and experiences. No matter what product or experience you work on, Protopi would be your go-to tool to design and simulate any interactions and animations and movements that you can think of. Connected devices will become more and more popular. And this is something that's already happening. We'll all have more and more devices that are connected to each other. Looking at myself, uh, I have a laptop, a smartwatch, phone, and tablet. And I could use an, an app like Google Calendar across these different devices. This means that um, as designers, you would have to pay attention to how your user interacts with um, with the same product across different platforms and devices. So cross-device interactions, I believe, would play a more evident role in the upcoming years, especially with the rise of 3D, AR, and VR. It's not going to get easier. Um, so designing and prototyping digital experiences in a sense, will be harder. This also means that the tools that we use on a daily basis um, would have to adjust to the shifts um, that will take place in product design. As you can see at the current rate, we are moving in. I genuinely believe high fidelity prototyping will become a necessary skill if you are working on projects that are heavily hardware driven. Businesses are also going to be better with capital allocation in the future, so they will always want to test and prove concepts before they invest heavily into one idea. Let me know in the comments below, what are your thoughts on high fidelity prototyping? Have you explored it before? And have you ever even needed it? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to gently smash that like button and subscribe. And if you're a regular, make sure to turn on the bell notification and I will see you guys in another video very soon.